Welcome everybody to a webinar series that we're gonna host here with Gaming Concepts about each of the courses we offer through the Gaming Concepts system. Um, we're gonna go through all five courses with our authors, Dr. Christy Custer and Dr. Mike Russell. Um, and we're gonna go in depth on each book so that you know exactly what you're getting, how it works, and why it's gonna be successful in your building. So let's go ahead and get started. Mike, tell us a little bit about the origins of Gaming Concepts, specifically today we're gonna to be talking about the Fundamentals book. Yeah, sure. Well, thanks for the introduction, Alex, appreciate that. Um, yeah, so basically this is just kind of a, a brainchild and it's uh, something that I've always wanted to try. I think even since I was a kid, I've always been a gamer and fortunately I found someone in, in Dr. Christy Custer who was able to help me bring my dream to fruition. So I've always thought video games had value and I wanted to put them in school. So uh, I thought, kids learn from them. And so it's kind of where it started. I, I started a complete high school maze in, in Kansas and started teaching a, you know, started teaching a class and uh, we needed to have curriculum for that. And so that's where the gaming concepts kind of evolved from as we got uh, together and got it board approved. So it's the first, until I'm told otherwise, the first Scholastic Gaming course taught for credit in the United States. So, um, and yeah, it's just kind of started from there and, and we didn't really have a lab or anything. So we wrote grants to get our lab going and, and started our esports program at the same time. And that's kind of where we met, um, I call them the boys from HSCL at the time, um, Mason and AJ, and they kind of captivated by what we were doing and like, how can we do this too? And uh, so after a bazillion phone calls, um, Christy had been on them with me and she's like, hey, we'll just write the book. There we go. That's where it kind of started. So we wrote some lessons. They put them out there. They said our teachers were loving it. Um, we fast forward to 2019. This was in 2017 when we started this. Fast forward to 2019, we were at ISTE. Um, when we presented on our curriculum and it was placed on a large uh, software manufacturer's website and downloaded 400,000 times in 40 countries. So we knew we were onto something. Um, so I'm going to give you kind of a brief overview of the course. Um, it's uh, college and career exploration is a big part of what we do. So what kind of careers are inside of esports and outside of esports? Um, PC building. Um, we have health and wellness, nutrition, physical activity, um, all those things. We have logs that the kids keep track of. Um, we also have a huge focus on mental health, um, which we'll get into more later as we as we go through the courses. And then sleep, I think something that uh, we've kind of discovered over time is kids, gamers sleep as much as, as kids who don't game, but it's at different times of the day and it's not, it's, it's more on the weekends and less during the week. So it's kind of an interesting thing that we figured out. So but we talk about types of games. Um, we have a section section in all our books called Purposeful Play, where the kids actually get into the game and reflect on what they're learning from the game. Um, we have a daily course, um, you know, there's a daily course breakdown in there. So it basically says, hey, 20 minutes is this, 15 minutes is this, 25 minutes is Purposeful Play. We give you all the directions. Um, Christy's gonna go through all that here in a minute. Um, I mentioned the reflection, and then I have a personal favorite <laughs> and we always tease about this one because nobody ever thought this would be good, but it's Router Basics. So Router Basics. Yes. Router Basics. It's, that's, that's the one. That's the one. So some of the curriculum resources, obviously, around uh, Gaming Concepts Fundamentals, we have a student resource, which is a, a workbook, what we would think of as a workbook. And then there's also a teacher's guide. And those are all on our LMS. And so... When you purchase Gaming Concepts, you can get the Teacher's Edition, the Student Workbook, and then you will also get the LMS. Um, students explore kind of like Mike alluded to, the history, game genres, um, technology, lots of hands-on troubleshooting, <laughs> uh, college and career readiness, and everything just has a technology focus. So we're really working on um, giving them a, a framework for technology, because what we're finding is when students take the CTE STEM courses, they're more likely to go into these CTE and STEM careers. And it's a personal favorite of mine because uh, it gets girls involved. Mm 
And so what we find is a lot of girls, uh, they play video games, but they don't necessarily play competitively. And what we're finding is these courses are taking the video games and putting them in a non-competitive environment, a classroom, where they're used to learning. And so not only are the girls responding to this in the classroom, but then they're also more likely to come and play after school. So we really like the classes in school. Um, other things that, that we're doing, it allows students to practice good gamer health. Mike talked about sleep. You know, we tell kids don't play video games all day or don't play for six hours or 10 hours or whatever it is, but we give them the why. Why is that not healthy? Um, we engage once again in, in digital citizenship. And so that's often a, a topic that many schools are having to do. And what we like about using gaming concepts and using video games to teach digital citizenship is it's so authentic. So many times uh, in schools, you know, we'll stop and we'll say, let's, let's have a, a lesson on why, uh, passwords and it'll be very inauthentic. But if you can relate it to video game passwords and why would you not want someone to get into your video game and then actually do it, then it's very authentic for the kids. And that's something that we talk a lot about with gaming concepts and why kids. We have, you know, 92% of our students give us a thumbs up, which is pretty unheard of. Anything with high school kids or middle <laughs> school kids, and they give us the th thumbs up. And a lot of that has to do with authenticity. What they're doing is immediately relatable to their life. Mm -hmm. um, so gaming concepts fundamentals, we say it's a it can be a 0.5 or a 1.0 credit course. And a lot of people say, well, well, what do you mean by that? Well, it just depends on how much time do you wanna spend. So typically we'll have 20 to 30 minutes of direct instruction, and then we'll have 20 to 30 minutes of uh, students practicing uh, indirect instruction. So they'll, they'll do a project or they'll do some research and then we'll have 20 to 30 minutes of purposeful play and 10 minutes of journaling. As you can see, when we're working with those time frames, it just depends on the class that you have. If you have a, a 45 minute class, can gaming concepts work for you? Yes. If you have an hour long class, can gaming concepts work for you? Yes. You can see where the purposeful play, you can see where the journaling, you can see where even class discussions, you know, depending on the teacher, these things can be longer or shorter. And so it, it really depends on what, this fundamentals class especially depends on what are the needs of the teacher, what are the needs of the school. And one of the great things about it is the flexibility to be able to adjust those timings based on how your class acts. Some classes are more talkative, some mm -hmm. are less talkative. And when you have the timing built in, you know what our recommendation is from a curriculum standpoint, but also you know the real life implications as a teacher. I don't have 25 minutes to do this. It could be broken up over two days or however long the teacher wants to, right. to utilize it to fit their time frame. Right. Mm -hmm. And that's important too for like the gameplay piece of it too, the purposeful play, because sometimes matches can be five minutes and sometimes they can be 15 minutes. It's just hard to tell. And so it does allow flexibility for that. Yeah. Well, and we even have seen schools, they'll do all of the, the coursework, the, the book work mm -hmm. or the LMS work on like Monday, mm -hmm. Wednesday, Friday, mm -hmm. and then they'll do for the longer games, they'll do the games on Tuesdays and Thursdays or yeah. vice versa, yeah. however. So it's very flexible. Um, and we always tell teachers, remember, we are all teachers. Yeah. Yeah. And so I think that's the most important thing to remember is that we taught in the classroom for various years. And so that is how the book was created, was with real teachers, real students, real scenarios in mind. So it's very flexible. The class is very flexible. A lot of people, and another question that we often get is, so what does this look like as far as what course are we going to use this for? Like if I bring it into my school, and because we are teachers, when I bring this into my school, what are we going to call this? Of course, you can always, you can always just have it as a, as a, general elective. Um, all of our courses could be general electives, but some of the ways that teachers are using this in the classroom is it's a, a specifically a technology education elective. Um, it pairs very nicely with a principles of information technology course. Um, and when you put the two of those together, oftentimes that would be a 1.0 credit course. Um, it could also be a computer science elective. Um, I know in Kansas, uh, 
they're allowing computer science electives to be a math credit. And so there would be need to be a little bit of tweaking in here to add, I think, to make it a little more robust. But there's plenty of computer science, like Mike talked about the router basics. There's plenty of computer science things in here so that you could probably do your math elective. Um, education for careers. We talk uh, every single, there are six units in the book and every single unit has a career speaker and a career lesson in it. So it could absolutely be some type of STEM or CTE uh, career exploration. And um, again, it, it pairs really nicely with other courses. And fundamentals here is, is the base level course that I think could allow students to excel in an esports pathway yes. further down the line if that's what your school is looking for. Because it does provide a really good overview, mm -hmm. actually, of the other books that come mm -hmm. after this. Yes. So it would be that, you know, half credit or one credit where students can kind of get a taste of everything and then decide, well, I want to continue in this esports pathway or not. Right. Yeah. It's really... Uh, and we didn't talk about this, uh, maybe briefly. So Complete High School Maze, where it started, was an alternative school. Yeah. And so it absolutely, um, I was the principal, Mike was a teacher, and it absolutely was started as a hook. My main concern at the alternative school was getting kids to school. And so it was an, it was an attendance booster for us. Uh, we, we like to offer, we, we tell teachers offer it at the beginning of the day, because once you get kids to school, typically they will stay at school. Mm -hmm. And so it just elevated all of the other classes. And so it's, it's that hook to get kids involved in school. Why am I coming to school? We talk about a lot, you know, what is the student's why? And this is definitely a why to come to school. They want to come because gamers, although there's a stereotype that they're going to be down in the basement, you know, gaming, mm -hmm. um, it's they're very social and whether that be social online or, or they really like to play in a group of people um, we saw our attendance rates go up and so if you can find that success and get those kids that don't have a why or don't have a reason to come to school this could be that class for them exactly uh, one of the other things that teachers and and administrators and parents really like about our courses is we have something called mental health moments built into all of our courses and as we've seen, especially post-COVID, uh, there's really a mental health crisis going on in schools right now. And we talk a lot about how are we going to help these kids? How are we going to help them be successful in school? How are we going to help them with, with their mental health? And um, we've really seen a, a, with, with SEL, social emotional learning, you know, over the last 20 years, that has skyrocketed, the amount of SEL. And we've seen mental health decline. It could almost be seen as, as causation. I, and I know it's not. There's a lot of other factors. But um, what we think, and we were a two-time National School of Character also at Complete High School May, so we've studied this an awful lot. And what we think is happening is it's, it's that authenticity piece yeah. again. It's very inauthentic. Typically what schools do is they say, uh, we're going to have 10 months of school. And so every month's going to have a character trait. And this month is friendship. And so we're going to stop class on a Wednesday, everybody in the school, and we're going to do a lesson on friendship. And we know students hate that. We know teachers hate that. And so what we've done is we've built in these mental health moments into our courses. And instead of stopping class, it's just built into a, the lesson. And so an example of this would be um, bullying is often a topic that that uh, is discussed in schools. And so, you know, typically we talk about, hey, we're going to talk about bullying today. Here's a video about bullying. And then the discussion goes something like, how many of you have ever been bullied? And everyone raises yeah. their hand. <laughs> Everybody raises their hand. Nobody wants to admit that. Right. Or, or how many of you have been bullied? Or how many of you have been the bully? Yeah. And, you know, that works out the same way. But if you talk about how many of you have ever um, seen toxic behavior online, you know, then everybody starts talking because everybody's seen toxic behavior. Right. And this is the class where we talk about toxic behavior. And so when you can make it authentic, it's still bullying, right. but it's very authentic. It's something that they're used to doing. And it blends, it, it just blends in, right? You're yes. talking about toxic gameplay. And even though the lesson is about toxic gameplay, it, you know, the, the larger scope of it is that it's about bullying it's about being respectful. It's about it's about all these different kind yes. of character traits and things that we want um, our students to exhibit in their lives. 
um, but you're, you're pulling it away from the fray of it being at home and pulling it into where a teacher can, you know, make those connections. Because I think a lot of times in gaming is that kids will hear information or they'll hear toxic, toxic speech or anything like that at home. And it kind of, you know, it just kind of goes through them. And if they, if they don't have that connection with a teacher to pull that information mm -hmm. out, to make a connection on, this is what we're going to do about this. Um, you know, then they can become complacent about that kind of information and think that those types of words and phrases are okay right. versus becoming an advocate for change um, online or in person um, with that with that teacher helping them through that situation. Well, it's definitely in the teachable moments. I mean, yeah. that's when all the, that's when the learning happens. I mean, mm -hmm. when's the best time to show a kid how to respond to toxic behavior? When toxic behavior is happening. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. If they're at home, their parents are probably down there with them or somebody's down there exactly. to mentor them how to mm -hmm. handle that situation and we brought that into the class so that they have a, a you know an adult there who can help them navigate those situations yeah exactly and i think that's really the important piece to this too is what do you do mm -hmm. in these situations mm -hmm. because i remember um one time a student walked out of your class and i said well, hey what'd you learn in in gaming concepts today and he said i learned that no response is a response and at first I thought he was being, you know, a little facetious and, and, but he was serious because I thought, you know, that's common sense. But then I really thought about social media and, and how many adults need to learn that no response is a response. Yeah. You don't have to respond to everything on social media. And so that just really resonated with that student and it was a teachable moment. Right. And so now that student will take that authentically mm -hmm. into his life and, and uh, hopefully apply that. Yeah, exactly. And um, with these mental health moments, there's, there have been multiple studies on this. Um, the the self-esteem mm -hmm. and knowing how to deal with things and not being nervous about it. The self-esteem, especially in our populations, uh, our LGBTQ populations, our um, African-American students, uh, almost, almost across every population, we have seen self-esteem go up in these classes because of our mental health moments mm -hmm. embedded so uh, strategically yeah. in all of the lessons. So uh, we've talked a couple of times about purposeful play and what mm -hmm. is purposeful play. So we've got that, that 30 minutes, 20, 30 minutes of direct instruction, 20, 30 minutes of indirect instruction, and then we have something called purposeful play. So purposeful play is definitely the hook that brings all the kids into the class. That's what they're going to think goes on. But in fundamentals, they spend about the first week, week and a half, and they don't even play any video games. And so set that expectation, you know, right from the beginning that, yes, this is a this is a scholastic esports, but there's going to be a lot of learning going on. And so we try to set that expectation right from the very beginning. Um, yes, there are going to be 20 to 30 minutes of purposeful play in there, um, but it's going to be very connected to the lesson. And, and you need to be focusing on what is going on in the lesson. Yeah, because purposeful play is not where you're just playing, right? It's that, like you said, there is a connection, right? Mm -hmm. Kids are going to be looking, they're going to be mindful of, you know, what they're looking for in their gameplay to reflect on in their journaling, because that's, mm -hmm. it's all connected. Yes. Right. Whether we're talking about, you know, strategic parts of color used in a game, right? And, mm -hmm. You know, how is color used in this game to set the mood or theme or, you know, indicate things or whether we're talking about, you know, in-game mechanics, right? And, mm -hmm. and the order of operations. And, and so they're looking for things to be able to pull out and reflect upon. Right. Yeah. And there's a very, I think this is something that we haven't taught, touched on um, that's very important for the adults in the building to know and parents to know that there's a very distinct difference between play for fun mm -hmm. and purposeful play. Yeah. And so we often talk about, you know, if you're working on a project and it's three or five hours, you know, on the computer working on a project, that's okay. Mm -hmm. But if you're just on there playing for, for fun, yeah. then there needs to be some specific boundaries set for yeah. that. And so that whole part about making the connection, and we, and we do talk about this in the book, between what is purposeful play and what is just play for fun, mm -hmm. what are the differences? And it's the same with screen time, yeah. you know, what type of screen time is toxic for kids? Mm -hmm. um, social media can often be one that if they're just scrolling through social media or or what are we doing with a purpose? Yeah, exactly. Well, just to interject, a lot of the feedback we get from students is it's a lot harder than we thought. 
<laughs> the class. The class is much more difficult than they anticipated because I think yeah. they do go in with that perception they're going to be gaming all day and yeah. and I think once they start to realize that it's more it's more rigorous that and we still have a ninety two percent rating which is yes. really good so yeah. even even though there is more rigor to it I think they they do realize that it, I think there's 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 work at the beginning but there's a payoff at the end and right. I think they start to recognize that and so. you can go over it as many times as you want in front of the you know the class in front of the building when you're trying to do like kind of course signups for the previous year mm -hmm. or for the next year where you're saying this is there's going to be rigor here there's going to be learning it's not just gaming you can go blue in the face talking about that yep. and they won't hear anything but <laughs> video games yeah. Yeah. that's all they'll yeah. hear yeah. and you'll you'll deal with that daily right yeah. as some you know as I taught it too um you know, I dealt with that all the time. The first week was the roughest because they were like, when are we going to play? When are we going to play? Yeah. Um, but like you said, you got to have those expectations put in, which luckily in the book, the whole first unit is setting the groundwork for mm -hmm. the success of your class the rest of the semester. Right. Yeah. And speaking of, you know, what games can you play? And this is another question we get a lot. Uh, we made this very uh, digitally agnostic mm -hmm. where you can teach this class. We, we have a school out in, in California that they had 25 kids sign up for the class and they only had 15 computers. And the kids, they were going to you know, move them into another class. And they said, we will do this on our phones if we can just do this. And so the game, as far as the courses, the games that you play are not nearly as important yeah. as the purpose yeah. of the games. And so... We have uh, uh, schools do, you know, web web based web based games from WellGames.com or Uno Online. Mm -hmm. To um, they they download a game on their phone, like Brawlhalla is a great one to do on their phone. Uh, Chrome, Chromebook game apps like chess can be played, um, or on their personal devices, they could use Nintendo Switches or bring in their Xbox. Um, and then the other thing is it's that teamwork aspect. It's the competitive aspect that we're teaching in this class. So we have some schools that use board games. And what we would suggest is that you use a combination of all of these things. Use the PCs if you can. Use the, the personal devices. Use the Chromebooks. Use, I mean, you can use pretty much whatever you want and, and whatever your school can provide. Right. Well, and I think it's good, too, that you have because you use the different devices, you have different types of games you're gonna play. Yeah. So yes. you learn differently from different types of games. So like some kids like different types, but kids would always wanna to gravitate to one game when I was teaching it. Mm -hmm. And I was like, no, we're gonna do this today yeah. because this teaches you, this uses a different part of your brain than what this is doing. Yeah. You're working on something else. Yeah, playing so, Settlers of Catan is a lot different than playing Uno. Right, right? And exactly. You, and, you, and you get different things from it. Yeah, yeah. so mm -hmm. anyway. I just wanted to throw that in there. Yeah, absolutely. Well, and and that perseverance piece yeah. also, Mike. Yeah. You talk about this a lot. Yeah, learning learning something new and and the number one requested uh, you know job requirement skill. or mm -hmm. skill that that employers are looking for is perseverance. Um, mm -hmm. You know, they want people who come to work and will work through a hard issue. And the best thing about you know one of the best benefits of video games is kids will play and play and play and play until they get through a level. I mean, I'm you know I'm old and I still do this. You know, I'm still trying to get, in. I'm still trying to get to achievements that I don't have yeah. yet. So I mean, yeah. you're always just trying to work to get to that next level. So I think yeah. building that into the school day and then mm -hmm. using that as an employment skill. Very good. Absolutely. Yeah. And once again, making that application to life, mm -hmm. you know, yes, this is hard right now. Yeah. This game is oh, hard. Yeah. This yeah. level is yeah. hard. So is life. Yeah. But yeah. you, you keep going. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, Chris, yeah, Chris, well, I, she was throwing me a bone there because you didn't notice, but, um, mm -hmm. Chris, she's absolutely right. We would, for fun, I would introduce a new game into the class and it would be something that was very unfamiliar to the kids. And then, you know, two weeks into it, they're, they've are they all got a master, but at the beginning, they're all like, I can't do this, I can't do this, I can't play this. And then all of a sudden, it's like two weeks later, like, oh, I did this and I yeah. did this. So they learned to overcome an obstacle. And I think for many of these kids, they've never had that opportunity or even been successful with something you know really yeah. in, you know, on that scale so i think it really builds their confidence and i think like so many things in the curriculum you know we're talking about fundamentals but it it, it spans the gamut the growth that happens mm -hmm. in these courses not only in things like when you journal all, all the time and, and you have that reflective piece your writing skills are going to grow and you're going to see that growth over time in mm -hmm. writing and comprehension yeah, and composition 100%. And then also perseverance and life skills. Those are going to grow as you go through these courses um, and have exponential benefits to these kids for yeah. sure. We, we have tons of stories like right. yeah. journaling stories are like, you know, I have a kid who starts off with a paragraph and then by the end of the class, he's writing me a, you know, one page essay. And mm -hmm. it's, it's, yeah. 
better than anything that I'd ever seen before. So yeah. tons of stories like that. So we've talked a lot about, you know, kind of how the course operates, right? As the teacher facilitating everything, but like bare bones, like what, what is the course? What, what are the, sure. what are the facts? Sure. So there are 81 one hour lessons in the course. And we've already talked about, so why, why are there 81 lessons? Because the, it's two nine weeks and we're teachers. So <laughs> that's 90 days of lessons yeah. is what it was originally built for, you know, at its, at its base that you turn to page one and you go like this and you turn to page two and you go like this, you know, lesson one, lesson two, or, or multiple parts of the lesson. Um, and like I said, the 20 to 30 minutes direct instruction, 20 to 30 minutes of uh, indirect instruction, the purposeful play, and then the journaling. And I'm just going to piggyback on what you said. Don't give up on the journaling right off the bat, no. because I promise you those kids are going to push back on the journaling and they are not going to want to do it. Yeah. But the growth that you're going to see there is going to be worth it. Yeah, Definitely huge. going to be worth Absolutely. it. Absolutely. So one of the things we get asked a lot is how you teach an esports course, right? Mm -hmm. Because a lot of times teachers like myself get thrown into this or asked by administration to teach an esports course, and we have no idea what what or how to teach an esports <laughs> course, right? I was a shop teacher for ten years, uh, and only my last year we piloted an esports course that I that I did, uh, which was gaming concepts. And so, um, you know, in going through it myself, and then also the experience that we have with educators um, and working for Generation Esports and Gaming Concepts is that, um, you know, the curriculum is really built to to be taught any way you like, right? It's kind of a buffet of of methods, so. Um, you know, the course can be taught either synchronously or asynchronously. Um, and then your, your, your method of teaching can be blended, traditional, virtual. I know you taught it more traditional, um, you know, when you were teaching it. I had to. Yeah, we didn't have an LMS. That's right. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's where it started. You had the, so, the notebook, right? And yeah. so, you know, and I, and I was working on the LMS at the time, you know, for you guys. And, and, you know, so I was doing more of a blended to see how the LMS would work mm -hmm. in a classroom mm -hmm. setting. And so, you know, it's kind of, you know, building the plane as we were flying it. And, uh, and it worked out really well. And, and now people can benefit from that LMS piece of it so that you could be completely virtual. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of the lessons, all the lessons, in fact, are written so that they can be facilitated by a student on their own. Are you going to get as much out of it? Definitely not. Right. But all of yeah. the written lessons are written to the student. Um, and then the teacher, the teacher instructions on the LMS are in the back end. But, you know, what it comes down to is, is the skills that we're teaching the kids in class that's gonna be your successes as a teacher in the class for yourself. Mm -hmm. um, and, and that comes back to that perseverance piece. Um, what you invest in the class and what I had to invest and what you've invested in the class, right, are what you get out of it, what you, you know, you reap what you sow, right? So if you take the time to invest in, you know, this course and, and kind of learning esports and having the kids know it all, right? So they, they will help you, right? That's, that's the best thing is lean on the kids, right? And learn together. Um, but if you if you make that jump or that leap of faith and, and know that this is what's good for kids, this is what's best for kids, the curriculum's already written for you, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. You don't have to worry about that. You just have to worry about that kind of interpersonal interaction piece of being the teacher, mm -hmm. right? Facilitating the content, you know, doing your craft as a teacher to to teach these kids up and have them learn something meaningful. Um, you know, there's a lot of technical knowledge where your IT team can help you out with that. Um, don't try and do all the whitelisting and ports and, you know, a student accounts, you know, lean on your IT department because that's, that's one, they'll be your best friend through this, hopefully. So get them nice Christmas presents. Um, and also they will give you access to everything you need um, and making sure that you have an open dialogue with them because things are going to change and they're going to change quickly. I know you used to have problems with, um, with Blizzard. Yep. And, yeah. you know, so, it, it's yeah. just perseverance. Yeah. We, so Blizzard, just FYI, will only let you use your credit card three times on every day. So we had 15 <laughs> accounts we had to buy. It took me five days to do that. Just throwing that out there. Yeah. And, and we, you know, we had, when we started up, we had tech issues too. Um, and so, you know, getting ports open for servers that are gameplay servers versus update servers, your IT team can help you out with any of that. And, and I think you're going to talk about technology and some, a little other, bit. Yeah, yeah, some, some extra, extra and, facts. And I just like to say, I think some teachers are nervous a little bit about, yeah. but I don't play video games. Yeah. I don't know anything about video games. And I always like to say, well, that's great because the kids do. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And that will give them buy-in and a lot of peer-to-peer mm -hmm. -peer and peer-to-teacher yeah. and peer-to-peer. -teacher -to -teacher -to the course was written, especially this fundamentals course, for this person right here. 
you know, <laughs> a lot of gamers look like you guys, but 80% of teachers, high school teachers, especially in the United States, look like me. And so um, I'm not a big gamer. I don't enjoy video games. And so um, that first course that we wrote, we wrote it so that I could teach it, mm -hmm. but that you didn't have to dumb it down so much that, that you could teach it too. So there are actually scripts mm -hmm. that you can use. You don't have to use them, but if there's something a little more technical like the router basics um, that I knew nothing about it's at the time, there. you can actually kind of read a script. Yeah. Not every lesson's like that because some of them are much more intuitive, but if there is something technical in there, we passed it back and forth. and. Yeah and said, you know, you write this one and I'll write this one and does this make sense? And then, you know, it's been tested by teachers. So yeah. there's there's no, we want this to be the class that the teachers are fighting over teaching mm -hmm. because everything's done yeah. for yeah. them. Yeah. And the kids want to be there. There is no, there, there are very, very few discipline issues in this mm -hmm. class because kids aren't on their phones. They're not asleep. They're not asking to go to the restroom. Yeah. They are engaged in this class. Exactly. Well, if there is a discipline issue, it's it's easy to handle because it's, oh, you're going to sit out for five minutes or you're going to sit out for a class. Yes. Or, I mean, yes. there's repercussions for that. And they sign a, you know, a classroom behavior thing that that's, they know the rules. They actually create the rules. Mm -hmm. So um, with some help from us. But yeah, I mean, so that there is incentive for them to behave and they hold themselves accountable, you know. So. Right. 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 So. Technology, yes. yes. Um, so Alex kind of alluded to this earlier. I always say the two most important letters in esports are IT. <laughs> um, they will be your best friend, as Alex said. They uh, they'll either be your best friend or or not helpful. And hopefully, yeah. if you are an IT person, please be helpful. Let teachers try something new. If if you are the teacher and you need the IT person, please buy them a nice Christmas present. Um, uh, they will they will make your life better. So. Um, you know, we, there's a, Christy kind of already hit on this about the games. There's tons of games. I mean, we have competitive games that we offer here at our league, but I mean, literally in the course, you can do any game that you want. So, um, and board games included. So whitelisting, very important. You'll want to, we have that whole list for you. We can provide that to you. So, you know, what ports to open and, and it's amazing how many things you have to open to get just the chat feature to work from Blizzard. And that's yeah. a separate chat feature from this game and this game. So there's a lot going on there. Um, again, if you go to your IT person and, and show them that, they're probably gonna be like, thank you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So at least I know what I need to start because yeah. right, but otherwise they have a ton of research on the back end to, to, to do that. So if you can provide them yeah. with that, it just takes something off Don't their back. Don't just say I wanna play Overwatch. Yeah. yeah, Like that's that's like, you know, Tomorrow. I want to use I, Google. Yeah. I can tell you, you know. I can tell you what they're going to say. It's going to be no. Yeah. <laughs> so, I mean, if we give you all the resources give, so yeah. you could just take it to them and make it super easy. Um, there's a, a lot of distinction here. You need accounts for Jenny. You need accounts for the LMS. You need accounts for your specific games. So there's a lot of things going on there. We can kind of help walk you through all of that. It's kind of laid out into the book. Um, one thing we always run into when this class is coming around is it's going to be so expensive. It's going to cost a lot of money. And we always encourage people to find schools to find, you know, computers that are already there. Mm -hmm. You know, Alex had computers because yeah. he was teaching a shop class and a drawing class. And, yeah. um, you'll have CAD machines and, and many of your labs and we don't need like, you know, $4,000 awesome computers to do this. Yeah. The computers that we raised our money to get in our lab are still the same computers they use today. And that was seven years ago. Mm -hmm. So you, they're still keeping up with the current time. So you don't need to worry about that. But I mean, if you can get new computers, that's great, but you don't have to have them, so. Well, and I think one thing that Generation Esports in particular is known for is our, is our help desk. Yes, mm -hmm. uh, sure. We, on, on the education side, we have 12 educators that have actually been in the classroom. And they were either principals mm -hmm. or teachers, or uh, we even have a para that was, that was helpful. And so we have a, a strong education team that is available to teachers. Mm -hmm. And then we have strong IT people on the tournament or co competition side, as well as um, the LMS. Um, you're not on your own. Yep. You're going to be able to get training, but it's one of those things. You're going to get that initial training and then you just need to reach out. Yeah. yeah. You, I, I yeah. sent an email yesterday that said, this is my email. Mm -hmm. This is really me. Because mm -hmm. someone said, is that really you or is that? No, this 
this is my email. This is me. If you email this, I am going to answer you. So if you have a question about the curriculum or or a suggestion, Mm -hmm. we take suggestions about it. So I think that that's a big important thing is teachers are not going to be on their own. Your IT department is not going to be on your own. We have hundreds of schools around the United States that are doing this. Large districts, we're going to be able to get you help. I was on the phone. I was on a a call yesterday with a teacher in Wyoming who could not get her students online on the Mm -hmm. LMS. There was an issue with sending invitations out to the students' emails and something was getting lost in translation. And she called us up and it was fixed that day, right? So mm-hmm. so I think that the ability to have personal support for something like this, yeah, especially 100%. when it's new, yes. is such a, a, vital. a vital thing for, for this to be successful, not only for us, right? For this to be a good curriculum and a, and a good company to, to host this stuff, but for a teacher to feel comfortable and secure that I, that you guys have, that we have your back. Right. Yeah. So, and then my, my last tech tip, and this is, this is tried and true. <laughs> You'll hear me say this every time you see me, but, uh, have you tried restarting it? That is definitely the, that yeah. is definitely the thing that I think you have to remember is try restarting it and, and it will help you with your IT department mm-hmm. because as an IT person, it's frustrating to me. I'm just going to say it's frustrating to me. When I have to go, when I'm going to help someone and I, all I have to do is restart it. Yeah. Because mm-hmm. I, I want, that's where you should start. I don't want to, please don't have me come over and say the computer's not working and then you've been pressing the reset button instead of the power button, yeah. you know, yeah. unless it's a training thing and you didn't know that. And then I'm happy to show you, but yeah. those are the things. It's like, oh, the power strip was off. Check those things before you yeah. start reaching out to your IT person because that is going to increase the frustration level because you're going to, when stuff really goes bad, you're really going to need them, and they're going to be probably a little bit less apt to run over and help. They're going to be so, busy. Yeah. So, just because my the, because tip. you are going to have trouble. Yes, you will. One hundred percent. Just like you do with every class <laughs> yes. that has yeah. to do with, yeah. especially with new classes with technology. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. So. And and the people that I like to lean on are the kids. Yes. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And, and that will help you a lot. That's that's a fair statement. They're so. super smart. Yes. So so, so we've 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 kind of you know, summed up the class, right? This is how it works in the building. But what about, where does this go if we're looking at it from an administrative or a district level situation mm-hmm. on how this aligns to things that we all have to take into account, which is standards. And how does how does this align to right. standards and what standards do we use? Right. So the good news is, the really good news is that we are in the process right now. Um, and this will be done by no later than, it's going much quicker than we thought, but no later than January of 2024, we are aligning all of our courses with state standards. And when I say state we- State specific standards. Yeah, when so I say we, state, it's, yeah. it's you, Alex. You wanna talk right. a little bit yeah. about that process? Sure, yeah. So currently we have national overarching standards, right? We use the National Career Cluster Standards. We use ISTE standards. Um, we use CASEL 5. Um, and then next gen ELA standards for the books. Um, but those are national standards and they're not catered to your state. So mm-hmm. what we are doing um, as a, you know, as an organization, we put, you know, emphasis on this and importance on it because mm-hmm. if you're a state or you're a school and you need to show the alignment in your state, you, that's extra work for you to have a curriculum mm-hmm. development specialist or a standard specialist or you know, you're, you're spending PD days aligning this curriculum that and you paid expensive. for. It's expensive. And expensive. We are going to take that on and we are going to do that for you. So for all 50 states, we will have state-specific aligned standards to our courses. Yes. And and what an amazing undertaking it is to, yes. to, to do that for five books, right? right? But you know what? It's an important thing um, that is just going to be one more thing that we take off teachers' plates to have mm-hmm. to have to, to worry about. Yep. So Absolutely. Yeah. Um, you know, and with that, another thing to take off your plate, right, is the the LMS. The LMS that we offer is, you know, very similar to ones that you've used already. So very similar to Edmodo, Schoology, Google Classroom, Canvas. Uh, you know, you have a classroom, you assign content, students turn in content. Um, it's it's tried and true, right? right. Um, our LMS features a little bit more interesting things with it. You know, it makes it a little bit more interesting to kids on some of the interactive features we have, right? Mm-hmm. So. I think that when you have an LMS, it can't be the, you know, the web 1.0, even web 2.0 is, is outdated now for, mm-hmm. for online interactivity. And so our LMS that I love, um, you know, it features these engagements and these interactivity functions that students can manipulate things like you would have out of a textbook 
from you know from from the 90s right i don't know if anybody remembers those those math books that had the pop out coins yeah, yeah. yeah right yeah. you know that yeah. gets you interested in all the shapes and all the stuff geometry with shapes yeah. and all with physical yeah. things mm -hmm. right we can't do that all the time with physical things now but you know we can do it digitally and for kids to interact with the curriculum online um, in a in a space that they're familiar with is so awesome for them to have not only buy-in but the content knowledge that they are able to retain by discovering online and, and manipulating things online is so powerful for their mm -hmm. retention um, and their passion for the content. And so, you know, if you know the LMS, I would definitely recommend taking a look at or giving us a call about understanding how it works more for your your school. Um, but the LMS is just one component of, of this whole system. Yep. So, my favorite thing about the LMS is the ease of the calendar. Yep. Yes, that you drag your assignments to the date, mm -hmm. a, a snow day happens, a speaker happens uh, or cancels or something happens. And then I can just bump everything just forward. Move it. Yes. Yeah. And, and also on the LMS, you can mm -hmm. modify the lessons yeah. and edit the lessons. Yeah. It's not just, it's not just static, right? It's, it's a living thing. And so, you know, not just the calendar is living, but the, the content's living. So yes. you can change a video, you can change the wording, you can add and subtract whatever you want, make your own gaming concepts and you build it yourself, right? We provide you with everything and you can really make it your own. Right. And I think that the work that we've put into making the UI and the UX and the experience and the efficiencies within it yeah. are why so many students love it. I mean, we have over 6,000 students on it and a 92% rating, right? Yeah. Which is why I think it just, it just works. Yeah. And I think one of the things that we that we maybe undersell or we don't talk about enough is just what a time saver this class is. Mm -hmm. um, the curation. So some people on first glance, you might look at it and you're like, well, there's a lesson here and there's videos here and there's some worksheets here and, and an activity here. But the amount of time that we have spent, especially with esports content online, yeah. how many hours of video did we go through and you know, I think I watched all of YouTube. Yeah, I think I watched it all. <laughs> I got to the end of YouTube. I think I just yeah. ended there like you're done. Yeah, it. Uh, you know, making sure that there there was appropriate language there and the mm -hmm. appropriate standards were being met and the appropriate. And then one of the things that we haven't talked about yet too that that makes the LMS really nicely is it's updated every semester. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so if there's a video that you know something in the world of esports or something has changed, we can update that. Mm -hmm. right now absolutely and then there's a massive overhaul because you've already done it mm -hmm. once um during the summer a massive overhaul so there will be some minor updates that need to happen at the semester and then a massive overhaul every yeah. summer plus the way that um we made our our books that is reflected in the books also yeah so yep it all changes yeah. yes so, so it's just a huge time saver for the educator so you know, we've talked a lot about stuff today, but, you know, in the end, it all comes down to support and we are here to support you in whatever you need. Right. So we have a dedicated service team that offers curriculum service, teaching service, tournament service. We haven't talked too much about tournament, but that's that's a whole nother deal. Right. That's yeah. another another webinar. That's series. another webinar. Series. Yeah. yeah so, sure. you know, we have people live people here for you almost 24 seven, kind of mm -hmm. depending on, you know, when you're, when you're, when you're going to contact us. Um, we offer information like this, what we're doing right now is webinars. We host webinars every semester. Um, so we have different seasons throughout the year of webinars and they cover topics for teaching, funding, coaching, forums, all kinds of things that a teacher mm -hmm. wants to be involved in this community and, and, and kind of get a little PD in. Um, you know, we offer mm -hmm. certificates for those as well. If you need to show your administrator for something like career ladder or, you know, some sort of you know, extra stipend, um, we can provide those to you for, for participating in our PD. And then all of this is going to be on our YouTube channel um, where we put all this content that we make uh, to support educators in, in what we do. So um, we, we have you completely covered for support. And if that's not enough, I think we have some awesome PD stuff too. So this is new just uh, for the 2023-24 school year is because we are educators, because we have so many educators on board, um, we have a very robust professional development opportunities that, that we're going to provide on top of the professional development that we give on 
the LMS yeah. on the curriculum, just, you know, kind of the basic stuff to, to do your class. We go deeper into what is esports and um, some pedagogy and mental health moments. And so we can either come out to your school and do that, which I think is is pretty new, or we can do that virtually. And then we're also creating some modules also that that schools can do. And so. And this is what really can set your school apart for, or your absolutely. district apart as an esports leader in your area or your region. Because, you know, if you think about it, uh, the only other model that I can think of where, where, where you're, you're coming out to train a school district to become better at a, at a, at a, you know, a, a suite of, of products mm -hmm. is Apple, right? And so <laughs> because Apple does that, you have Apple distinguished teachers, Apple distinguished school, mm -hmm. they have a whole ecosystem of that, right? And you know, you can look at these districts and see, oh my gosh, look at all the creative, powerful things that they do in their classrooms. Yes. And that's because they have the support of professional development behind it. Mm -hmm. And they've committed, they've committed to that create that creativity or, you know, the ecosystem that that is built there. But it, that, that goes to any product that you're looking for. Like if you're trying to be a leader in this, then let us help you train your people and, and get you on the right foot. Where this really right. came from um, is alternative school teachers. You can't go to college to become an alternative school teacher. You can, come, you can go to college to be a math teacher, yeah. science teacher, social studies teacher, PE teacher. But to be an alternative school teacher, it was very niche. And we want to provide professional development for esports teachers or mm -hmm. you know scholastic esports scholastic gaming uh, because we really think that that this is moving the profession yeah. forward we're having a struggle right now kids are not engaged they're not engaged in their classes they're not engaged in their lessons uh something like 70 or 80 percent of kids say that that what they're learning in school isn't important to their life they don't see the connection that's what our goal is we want kids to enjoy school to see the connection and to do that, we have to have teachers that understand the pedagogy behind what we're doing. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Well, thank you, everybody. This has been an awesome in-depth talk about what Gaming Concepts Foundations. Mm -hmm. Thank you, everybody. This has been awesome. Um, I want to thank you for being here. This has been an awesome in-depth talk about Gaming Concepts Fundamentals. Mm -hmm. um, I think that we have gone way over on on the amount of information that, that we have shared um, just because there's so much here, right? Yes. The, the, the course is, you know, not only innovative, but it is, you know, there's a lot to it. There's a lot of facets to it. And we, I think we've hit on all of them. So Mike, Christy, thank you so much for doing this. Um, and we hope that you guys enjoyed this video um, and we will see you next time. Thank you. Thank you.